I keep running into my limits. I'm limited on my time, my ability to really nurture each child exactly at the moment that they need it. I'm limited on my capacity for friendship. And today I'm just sharing what that looks like for me as a homeschooling mother trying to also have friendships um, just at all and navigating social media and its place in my life and how I have had to really set up some boundaries so that I'm not distracted, but also so that my mind can be clear enough um, to be present with my family. So I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to first talk about social media and how I just manage my cell phone during school hours. And then I'm going to share how I navigate loneliness as a homeschooling mother. So I'm Joy and welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for being here. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up if it encourages you and consider subscribing. So social media is one of those things that is never satisfied. There's ne you'll never find the end of it. And I found the scripture and I just want to read it to you because it, it's just, anyway, I'm going to read it. This is from Proverbs 30, 15. Three things are never satisfied. Four never say enough. Sheol, which is hell. The barren woman, the land never satisfied with water, and the fire that never says enough. And when I read that scripture, or I just can I have, I've been reading over the Proverbs for the last couple of years, and as I was wrestling with social media and thinking, man, I just I feel like there's never going, I'm never going to come to the end. Like there's always more to learn. I'm I'm so overwhelmed because I do love learning new things. And that scripture like popped into my mind, and I was like, yeah, this never says enough. It's never satisfied. It's unquenchable. So, I don't know, just claiming that truth has given me a lot of freedom. I am finite. God is infinite. And uh, the internet, it is always changing. It's always evolving. It is, there's always people adding to it. But God, he is unchanging, he is constant, and he, you know, really designed us to want to check in with him all the time. So if you do find yourself like I was, you know, checking your phone on a regular basis, if that is something that God put in our heart, that we want to check in on a regular basis. So... You know, I just, I'm going to share what I do, what I've been trying to do as I started to find myself looking for my phone for, well, I don't even know what I'm looking for, <laughs> just looking for something to distract my thoughts or whatever. So the first thing that I do with my phone during the day is I keep it in the kitchen or I keep it in a separate room from where our homeschool room is. Now, I've tried a couple different things. I read um, the book Digital Minimalism, which gave me some other ideas and kind of ways to pull, pull back from how, which is the place that technology needs to have in my life and in our home, because I, mean, I just really long for the prairie and just days where we're not so connected. But I also, I just, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think technology itself, obviously, like I get to talk to you right now using technology. I know how to use a computer really well. So I, I have this tension, almost like this love hate, like I want to use it as a tool um, to help serve me. But I have found that over kind of the last 20 years of me engaging with technology, it has started to encroach more and more um, on my life. And really now we're at a place where we have to start to set boundaries and say, 
you know, you can only go this far. Like you, you're not welcome in these aspects of my life. So the next thing that I've done is I, I'm on Instagram. I've been on it for years, actually, when it was really new. And I've really enjoyed connecting with my friends. But as I've kind of moved on into the homeschool world, I've been following different homeschoolers um, that have kind of a larger platform or whatever. But what I found is that is not good for my heart. I struggle with um, comparison and coveting. And I just, I know that those are things that on my heart, I just, I really struggle also with discontentment. So just knowing that those are kind of the way my heart is more oriented, I have had to just, I really had to go through and just unfollow a lot of people who, like, they're not my physical friends and just pick out, okay, these people I can follow because that is an encouragement. But honestly, I deleted it from my phone last week. I turned off my phone from Saturday night until Sunday night, kind of as a Sabbath. And it just gave me such rest. And then I actually haven't been on Instagram this week. And I'm probably going to stay off, I don't know, for a while. So I, I just have to figure out what I, what I did for a while was I would just put it back on my phone on Friday and I would share one or two things on Friday and maybe Saturday and maybe just look through and see what my friends were up to. Let's talk about loneliness as a homeschooling mother. Loneliness is a real thing that we struggle with in our culture. Uh, now you go to the, visit the doctor and they'll be like, how often do you see people in real life? How much time are you engaging with you know, humans? And it's like, this is a question that doctors' offices are asking because it's real that people are not engaging with other people. Just obviously, you have your children at home, you see your husband, but like we are made for relationship. We're made to thrive in community. So when we're getting all of our community through our phones, it is not satisfying. I already mentioned that one of the ways that I combat loneliness is through texting with friend, like local friends um, who I see on a regular basis. And I also am a part of, it's actually a part of three book clubs. Um, well, I have a mentor group and we just go through a book and that's through my church. And there's a mentor mom and then several other of us and we're all homeschool moms in that group. And honestly, it's just been so great. That is just prayer and encouragement. And, you know, when we moved here, I had not had that before. So when I got invited to that, I was just all in, just yes. So my other two book clubs that I'm a part of, one is a Charlotte Mason book we just read charlotte mason's books you know over and over and discuss them and there are mentor moms in that group and then we have a book club as well and we're going through different types of literature now i have a really high capacity these days for reading a lot of different things and actually each of those well one of them you have to read a whole book but the other two it's like you're reading a chapter or two and i can usually do that like the day before and the day of kind of get that reading in but that's really not the point the point is the friendship and having people that I'm seeing on a regular basis and I found that I'd love to see people weekly I'd love to see them several times per week but we live further out from our church town community so once a month with these different groups and some of them overlap is what I found has been so life-giving and so helpful as a support for me. Because then, like yesterday, I was having some trouble with one of my kids. And I called my friend who's mentor. And she's got, you know, all, basically all her kids are um, all the way out of the house. She's got like two at home still. Um, and I just called her and I was like, this is hard. And sometimes I don't want to keep homeschooling. And I don't know if I can do that with this student. And, you know, and she's like, yeah, my kids, I had the same issues. Like, 
it was hard and sometimes they wouldn't do the work that you wanted them to do. And sometimes it would be months before I found out that they weren't doing their work. And then, you know, then they had to spend the summer doing that one assignment or whatever. And I was like, oh, <sighs> being hard, it's, that's normal. It's okay. The other two things that I have for combating loneliness is one, just join something. So we've also in the past just joined like a mom's Bible study. Our church, again, our church is so great. They do have a homeschool room for our older students. Um, but I know that's not an option for everybody. But finding a way to just join and be connected with people within the community on a regular basis, that might even just be uh, basketball or, you know, some type of sport just for the purpose of getting connected. And then the last thing is just setting up play dates, like calling someone and saying, hey, will you meet us up at a park? Or for us, we love going for hikes. We have a really great area um, for hiking and we'll just text, I'll send out a text to a few friends and just say, hey, can you guys meet up with us? I do see that loneliness and social media do go hand in hand. I'd love to hear how you navigate social media as a stay-at-home mom, a homeschooling mother, and then also how you combat loneliness. Please uh, leave a comment and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.